Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be talking about the Episode 1 premiere for Season 6, the final season. Man, we have so much to break down and talk about, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so we are making this video right after the Supergirl premiere. And I'm high-key freaking out. That was a really, really good episode. Yes, like, some of the stuff is a little bit rushed at the start. However, how it ends and what happens with Supergirl, I was losing my mind. And I'm low-key kind of shaking right now after this because it literally finished, like, four minutes ago. I jumped on. And I'm like, I gotta review this right now. So I have so many notes. We have so much stuff to talk about and break down and freak out about. So... Yeah, hopefully you guys really enjoyed it. I love the premiere episode. I'm just so happy Supergirl is back. Yes, it's kind of bittersweet because it's our last premiere. However, it's awesome to see Supergirl back no matter what. And so there were some amazing twists and turns in this episode that we're going to get to in this video. Also, if you want me to upload my Supergirl reviews right at this time, right after the episode airs, obviously it's going to be up like... 45 minutes maybe after because I have to edit actually talk and put it up online I'll be sure to do this every week It's either this or the flash straight away after because the flash has the hour before and Either or basically you're gonna get both my flash and supergirl reviews just one earlier and one later So be on lookout for my flash episode 5 review slash breakdown later today That's gonna be coming around 5 p.m. UK time because that aired just before Supergirl. But anyway, let's go ahead and freak out about this premiere. So, Gamine is alive. She is this robot version of herself. She's freaking out. She goes to the Leviathan ship. She's like, you're not gonna stop me. And then Team Supergirl shows up at the ship. They stop her. And half of them can't actually go in the room. Because of the poison that was explained last episode. Obviously, that was a while back. So, basically, that is why Brainy was technically dying. He wanted to sacrifice himself. But they find a way to get him out, to get everyone out, but to also stop Gamini by using the anti-life equation. Now that is very... because they literally just plug that in and they stop her officially. So Leviathan is gone and she's literally wiped out within like the first 5 to 10 minutes of the episode I would say. So yeah, I mean that was the only thing that felt a bit rushed, like how quickly they defeated her. But then again, I think the most interesting part of this whole episode is what comes after. So, I'm not going to put it down on them. Like, I really enjoyed how they actually quickly wrapped it up and they got onto the really interesting stuff with Lex and what happens with Supergirl. So, let's move on to that. So, Lex gets powers in this episode and he's stripped of them later. However, we get to see him at the bunker. He's getting his powers. He is practicing with them. Then he's like, I'm going to do what the Anti-Monitor failed to do basically taking over all of the planets in the universe and destroying them and giving them a Lexi upgrade. He says, uh, I love Lexi upgrade, obviously a reference to I love Lucy, but it's just a very funny kind of very Lex way to say, I'm going to take over the world. I want them to love me and to trust me. And so that's what he says. I love Lexi upgrade. And I thought that was really funny. Lex has some great moments throughout this episode that really made me laugh. And so his mum begs him not to kill Lena. That is kind of her main point of the story because she is kind of adamant on, no, you can't do this to Lena, but you can do it to like everyone else, but just don't do it to Lena. So I think at one point, you know, she's always got this kind of morally gray area where she has this very soft spot for Lena that Lex doesn't have. And so as we saw in the sneak peek just before a couple of days ago, Lena explains Lex's plans to the team. And at this point, Dreamer goes into her mind and she dreams about what Lex is going to do if his plans succeed. And so he literally becomes the anti-monitor. Now this was an awesome scene. I was like, whoa, what is happening here? He literally destroys the earth. He turns huge. And Lex is wearing the anti-monitor suit. So that was definitely one of the craziest moments in the episode. This dream of like what happens if it turns out to be true. This will be a real nightmare because number one, the Earth will be destroyed. Number two, Lex would be the anti-monitor. So he would be going from universe to universe destroying them. And yes, the CGI was a little bit wonky on that. But I thought the concept and scale of it was really, really cool. And so I really enjoyed that bit with Dreamer. Okay, so then they talk about, you know, the 12 satellites. McGann comes up with this ritual that is a Martian thing. Obviously, Jean plays a part in that. And so Supergirl offers to sacrifice herself. 
to offer herself up as bait for Lex to draw him into the fortress and so she shows up in a hologram form at Lex's base and so this is definitely new footage that they shot with Melissa because Melissa's wearing a wig in it. I don't know if you guys could tell but this was footage that they shot after the pandemic break because if you guys didn't know like 90% of this episode was actually old footage from before in March because this would have been the season 6 finale but it makes for a really explosive and great premiere and so I really really enjoyed all of this and yeah it was really nice seeing you know a new version of Melissa you know like modern day Melissa actually showing up and I thought that piece of footage was really cool seeing her as a hologram and she definitely looks different you know something is up and the reason is she shot this in January. And so they set up the meeting at the fortress that is the whole point of the hologram between Supergirl and Lex and so Lex is like yes I'm gonna go there but I'm gonna actually kill her because she doesn't know I have these powers right now and obviously Supergirl doesn't know about that however Supergirl has a backup plan and we'll get to that in a minute and so then we cut over to Katko, we see Andrea, she's crying over her father's words and basically her father condemning her and her actions. However, you see Kelly and Kelly is comforting her and there's a lot of comforting in this episode. Just after this, Alex comforts Jean as Jean has doubts about his mind and basically being so open with McGunn doing this ritual is going to let her see everything with inside of her but Alex comforts him talking about how he needs to have trust and how something great could come of this but yeah so going back to Andrea she is comforted by Kelly and this leads towards what she does later in the episode where she suits up and basically screws over her father by putting all the stocks in obsidian when she knows obsidian is basically folding okay so then we move on we Nia is a temporary legionnaire because Brainy has given her the ring and so he's trying to figure out what's going on with himself and they have a really good few scenes in this episode. I really, really enjoyed Brainy and Nia together, as always. I really do think we need to see more of them when Supergirl ends, so I'm really hoping to see Nicole and Jesse back after Supergirl ends. And so, with this, I was like, she's totally going to become a Legion member by the end of the show. I'm pretty sure that was what that was setting up, by giving her a Legion ring, being like, yes, this is a signal. I think the Legion is probably going to come back at the end of the season. They're all probably going to go to the future, that being Supergirl, Nia, and Brainy. They'll all become Legionnaires. They'll protect the future. And obviously, Supergirl will reunite with Monel. I think that is the main theory going into the end of the season. And that's definitely mine right now. And I think this scene definitely set up Nia as a Legionnaire. And also in this episode, she is referenced by Lillian as Dream Girl, who is a Legionnaire. She is a descendant of Nia now from the future, so everything is kind of lining up for that. Okay, so we go to the fortress, we have this fight, and you have, just before that actually, Kara and Lena, they have this really nice talk, and so Kara basically reveals to Lena that she trusts her, and she doesn't need to say sorry or anything, and especially with Myriad, she trusts her to do the right thing, and I thought that was a really nice moment, they had some great moments, but one of my favorite moments in the whole episode was the Danvers sisters scene. So Kara and Alex, right after this, they have this great funny moment talking about her stealing all of Kara's items, like her graphic tees, they say. And yeah, it was just a really, really great moment. And it's a scene to be treasured. And I really hope we get more of the Danvers sisters relationship later in the season. And then Kara does something quite unexpected. She begins to record volumes, stating a record in voice form, so in audio form, for people to learn from her after this. And so just before Lex shows up, she's able to finish volume one. They find it by the end of the episode. And so I'm sure we're gonna listen to that very soon, but we only got a snippet of that in this episode because it cut just before then. And so now that she's gone is the last kind of line she says before it cuts to black. So it's quite a sad moment, the fact that she has to do something like this. And yeah, that really got to me. I was like, in my notes I wrote, sad face. Okay, so Lena and Brainy have a talk and it was a nice scene, that kind of dynamic. We don't normally get that that much. And there is some more comforting. So Lena comforts Brainy's thoughts about his mistakes because you know they have similarities last season they both made mistakes Brainy was working with Lex Lena was working against Supergirl for her own selfish needs 
and so basically they have this kind of bond and it was a great scene okay so let's move on so you have John and McGann they fly up into the sky all the satellites work and they turn on and everything is going crazy you know the red beams going everywhere and so you know there was some pretty good CGI right there and then we go to the fortress we have Lex versus Supergirl so Lex shows up Kara talks about how similar he is to her in the fact that he's talking about like aliens ruling the world and like what happens if Lex rules the world but right now he has alien genes basically flowing through his blood because he gave himself powers so you have like a few great moments like that as they talk to each other and at the same time you have the return of Otis so he hasn't been here for a while we know he's going to be in the next episode I don't know if he's going to play a big part at all but he's just here as a familiar face so Otis and Lex's mom Lillian face off against Nia and Alex who go through the portal from the fortress and so you get the dream girl reference from Lex's mum. Alex and Nia fight them, proving that Alex is a great hero. And she has a big moment at the end of the episode with John, which we'll get to in just a moment. And so then we go back to the fortress. You have Supergirl fighting against Lex. I mean, it's not much of a fight because Lex uses the kryptonite, basically cripples Kara almost instantaneously. And so you're like, is Supergirl dead? Because she's hit with this huge beam and she's just lying there lifeless. And Lex even feels her pulse. I believe there was no pulse, right? So you're like, is Supergirl dead? But then just before that, the suit actually comes over and attaches to her. And you're like, oh, that's smart. They planned this. So she's preserved by the suit. So Supergirl is in fact not dead. Great twist right there. Definitely very smart of Team Supergirl to think of something like that. And so then we cut to the ad break and then we came back and Lex is being Lex and he is basically dancing and singing along, shooting off guns to We Are The Champions by Queen. Classic Lex moment, great moment. And it was just like a really, really nice moment that, you know, you wouldn't normally get in every single Arava show. It was just a pure Lex Luthor moment. So Team Supergirl, come in they fly in Lex is like oh my god how is Supergirl alive well then they explain just briefly and then they proceed to have a fight Lex uses his powers team Supergirl is trying to stop him you have Lex flying up in the air they're all shooting their beams Lex got this like kind of green glowing field around him like a force field and so Supergirl in a big twist as Lex finds the phantom zone projector gets sent into the phantom zone what my mind was blown. I mean, that was my theory. I was like, how are they going to do this, like, first six, seven episodes with Melissa kind of not there? Like, she's going to be in the episodes because they did go back and film stuff for, like, a whole month. So she is going to be shooting Phantom Zone scenes. However, I was like, okay, this is pretty likely. It's going to be the Phantom Zone where she goes rather than, like, her sacrificing herself and actually dying because she can have an actual story in the Phantom Zone and I think that's really really exciting and it's a great angle for them to go in and so just the scene I mean it was so shocking like Alex shoots Lex and the Phantom Zone projector is literally pointing straight at Alex so Alex would have been the one to go but she shoots Lex and Lex basically loses control and the Phantom Zone projector hits Supergirl and she basically disintegrates or like she's sent through this portal and you're like, oh my god, what is happening? So that was one of the best moments of the episode. I was losing my mind. I'm sure you guys were. Let me know in the comments down below. And so it's at this point that they find Supergirl's Volume 1, her last will and testament of what she was able to record before Lex interrupted her. And so they can't track Kara's location inside the Phantom Zone. This is going to be a big thing. And so Jean also later references how they might get her out and we'll get to that in just a second but Lex gets arrested he's actually sent to prison and Lena actually confronts Lex when Lillian is also there and so they have green eyes she uses Myriad one more time and that is in fact to erase their minds of Supergirl's identity and I thought that was a really nice moment great to see Lena actually realizing that this is important keeping her identity protects people it doesn't harm people and so I thought that was a really great like circle round for Lena so then we go over to Catco you get this stuff with William and Andrea so Andrea is basically fully focusing on Catco I think this is the best thing for the story that Obsidian isn't around 
because I think it definitely distracted from the Catco stuff, and so I'm very happy we're gonna get more Catco. So you also get a Cat Grant reference here, saying that Kara is off with Cat chasing a story. That's obviously Kara's alibi as made up by Nia and Team Supergirl, and at this point, William is very confused. So then you get this nice Brainy and Nia scene once again, Nicole kills it in this scene, and they are being set up once again to be back together. It was a really great moment. Okay, so then we go to the Alex and Jean moment, so they reference Midnight in the Phantom Zone, but also that Malafea, John's brother, might know someone who could track down Supergirl, and so Jean talks about how he believes in Alex, and he gives her a superhero name. And her official name is Sentinel, so she's named after someone that Jean used to work with on Mars. And so I like this name, I think it's a very cool superhero name, and I'm really happy Alex is fully becoming a superhero. Also, we know Kelly is going to become a new version of Guardian this season. We'll probably do another video on this later in the week, but there's so many exciting things going on right now. I mean, my mind is going in 40 different directions. And it seems like they're gonna be the heroes of National City, well, the main heroes. Obviously, you're gonna have Nia and Brainy as well. However, Jean and Alex are gonna be like the core team while Supergirl isn't present. And I think they are great replacements for Supergirl while she is gone. And so, then we learn that Alex is going to reveal Supergirl's identity to Kelly, which she's never done before, which is kind of surprising if you ask me. Because I feel like she knows, but I guess that's just me remembering stuff wrong. But then we move on to the final scene of the episode, and it's Supergirl in the Phantom Zone. And so there's all of these kind of devilish creatures looming in on her, and they look like literal phantoms. It was extremely creepy, and I was like, what the hell is happening here? And the landscape is completely barren, it looks like hell. And so you're gonna see a lot of Supergirl over the next like six, seven episodes stuck in the Phantom Zone, and I can't wait to see who these guys are and what she's gonna find inside this place. But that's about it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed my review slash breakdown for episode one, aka the premiere. I can't wait to talk more Supergirl with you guys. Remember, I'm going to have my Flash review up next, then I'm going to have my Supergirl trailer breakdown for episode 2, so please be sure to stick around, turn on notifications, and subscribe if you're new to not miss any videos. There's going to be two more later today, so for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.